Previously on The Bill. You're the boss. Whatever you say. Kelly! What are you doing? Have you gone mad? Oh, I'm all right now. Sarge. Danny. You decided. About? Simpson. The guy you beat up? What, you've forgotten about him already? Of course not. Then are you going to tell the governors what's going on, or am I going to have to do it? You'd love that, wouldn't you? No, I just think it's the right thing to do before this whole thing blows up in our faces. Yeah, well, it won't, so why should I rock the boat? Rock the boat? That's a bit of an understatement, isn't it? There's petrol bombs going off left, right and centre out there. Tony's stamp was almost turned into a human torch. Those fires started way before we had our run-in with Simpson. Before you had your run-in, you mean? Whatever. Either way, you're in this just as much as I am. Yeah, and I don't like it one bit. Relax. How can I when it's getting out of hand? Sarge, you have to do the right thing. No! You do what you have to do. But I guarantee you, if you grasp me up, I'll take you down with me. Ah, Jim. There you are. Any suspects for these arson attacks yet? Uh, well, no solid leads as yet, sir. Obviously, I checked yesterday after PC Stamp was attacked, but all I got... Check again. I don't want my officers being used for target practice. Yes, sir. The last thing we want is another older in Sun Hill. You and I both know racism has to be tackled head-on. There's no room for complacency. Ooh. Where's he going in such a hurry? For an illicit rendezvous with his mystery woman. No, it wouldn't surprise me if it was somewhere around here, where he's been ducking about. Oh, I hope so. Why, are you going to make it your business to find out, Sarge? Absolutely. You can't put a price on information like that. You know what they say? Knowledge is power. He just came in, tried it on, and then ran out without paying. I remember what he looked like. Medium build, blue eyes, dark hair. And what about the suit? What was that like? Same as this. This bloke didn't have a guide dog with him by any chance. Never mind. That's very striking. What would you say that was? Very loud, Rich. No, the colour. Is that purple? It's called puce. It's one of our best sellers. Puce? It should be called puke. It's revolting. Oh, I don't know. Do you think you'll catch him? What if he's wearing that? I think there's a very good chance, eh? Everybody Look out, here comes Knight Rider. Do you want to check out me the clan and seats? I think I'd rather stick pins in my eyes. How do you afford that on your salary? Me some mine in the car business. Gave me a deal of a lifetime. Looks fast. It is. So we need another boy racer. Oi! You're not leaving it there. Chandler's probably out skiving somewhere. He won't know. I don't care. Move it. Now! Jealousy's a terrible thing, isn't it? I'd shift it if I were you. Well, you're not me, are you? The amount of money I paid for that, I want it somewhere I can see it. Where everyone else can see it, you mean? Is that Mr Alberti? Mr Alberti? PC Bradford, PC Tabner. Can you tell us what happened, please? I was held up by gunpoint, wasn't I? Bloke pointed a magnum in my face and told me to get out my van. A magnum? What an ice cream? No, oh, I mean a proper magnum, a gun. Know much about guns, do you? Not really. Well, how do you know it was a magnum? Because he said, this is a magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world, and could blow your head off. So you've got to ask yourself... Do I feel lucky? Yeah, that's it. And then he said... Go ahead and make my day. Yeah. Do you know this guy or something? Mr Eastwood. Oh, yeah, we know him really well. Could it have been a business rival? Got any enemies? Me? No. Can you tell us what you look like? Sure. Young bloke, 
tall, with brown hair. I can't understand it. Why would anyone want to steal an ice cream van? Hey, Nick. Yes, Sarge. Isn't that Asim Khan? Yeah. There was a disturbance outside the Cromwell bar. I found him right in the middle of it, waving a broken bottle about, ready to take on a bunch of skinheads. Well, that doesn't sound like him. Yeah, I know. We were only playing football a couple of weeks ago at a community tournament. Not the same bloke, if you ask me. So what's got into him, do you think? Same thing that's got into everyone else. It's a little bit mad out there at the moment, Sarge. Derek! Hello, sir. Didn't expect you back so soon. Obviously. Sir? Well, I've just tried to park my car and the space is already occupied. Know anything about it? No, sir, I don't. Well, so much for me trying to run a tight ship. It seems it only applies when I'm here. I'll see to it straight away, sir. I've only been gone an hour and there seems to be a total breakdown in authority already. I've just had my ear chewed off. Dog on the loose. Oh, very droll. More like Mr Chandler on the warpath. Who was stupid enough to park in his space? There's Traveller. Oh, he's acting superintendent now, is he, when Mr Chandler's not here? I did tell him to move, sir. Well, he hasn't, so I suggest you talk some sense into him. What do you think he's playing at? He's got a death wish or something? Now, your friend's statement says that you were defending yourself. Instead of turning the other cheek, you mean? Can you go through the whole story again for me? I told you. I was having a drink with a couple of my mates, minding my own business. Next minute, a bunch of about ten skinheads walked in and started on us. You know, packy this and packy that. We ignored them. And then my mate asked the landlord if they were still doing bar meetings. And one of the skinheads, an elder bloke, shouts over, they don't sell cat food in here. Tells us to try the pet shop. God, I'm sick of idiots who know nothing about me or my culture. They don't even know anybody Asian. So what gives them the right to make our lives a misery? They don't have the right, but neither do you to threaten them with an offensive weapon. Look, as in, we know that you're usually quite a sensible guy. Can't you just rise above it? I've been doing that for as long as I can remember. And where has it ever got me, eh? I'm sick of playing the victim. It's time to strike back. We can't have people taking the law into their own hands. Law? <laughs> That's a laugh. Isn't there a law against racists marching through an Asian neighbourhood? It's not as easy as that. What, so you're just going to let them march anyway? No. Take it from me. It'll be the last time they do. So what are you going to do? Are you going to lock me up or let me go? Well, that depends on whether you can promise me that you won't retaliate against these people. As in? I'm sorry. That's a promise I can't keep. I tell you, some days it's like working in the twilight zone out there. Weird. Tell me about it. One minute they're chucking petrol bombs at you. The next they're stealing stuff they can't possibly shift. You should have seen the suit that they nicked from the tailors on Canley Eye Road. Bright purple. Yeah, well, maybe Mystic Reg can shed some light on what's going on. That's a very good point, then. Yeah, Reg, have a read of that. Tony, I wish I could share your amusement. I've had this dark cloud hanging over me all day today. I can't make any sense of it. I can't make sense of who'd want to hold up an ice cream van. It's hardly joyriding material, is it? Tell you what is, though. Chandler's new motor. Saw it earlier. Black Toyota. Parts out in the yard. Yeah, I saw that. Bit flash, though, isn't it? For Chandler. That's not Chandler's. That's mine. Yeah? I thought I saw it parked in his space. That's right, and that's where it's staying for today. Yeah, but you don't antagonise him. You're already on his hit list. Do I look worried? I'm not moving till I speak to someone about my friend. What's his name? Khan. Asim Khan. You brought in the wrong guy. He's done nothing wrong. All right, if you'd like to take a seat, I'll get someone to come and speak to you. And Kathy, look, this is Mrs Walters. She wants to speak to an officer regarding her daughter. Mrs Walters, PC Bradford. I believe you've got a problem you'd like to discuss. Yes, it's my daughter, Hayley. I'd like you to have a word with her. About? These. No, I told you that I'd keep you posted. OK, thank you. Derek, just to let you know, sir, that business with your car parking space, I got Matt Boyden to sort it out. Good, thank you. 
As you're back so early, I take it your meeting with the DAC went according to plan? No, it didn't actually. In his infinite wisdom, he's decided not to cancel the march, but just to reroute it by a couple of blocks. Well, did he talk to the community leaders about it first? No, he's left that for me to do. Well, with all due respect, sir, I wouldn't leave it too long. Well, best to tell them firsthand. You know how news like this can travel. Yeah, I'm aware of that, Derek. Thank you. Gotcha. Come in. Kate, close the door. Is there a problem, sir? Yes, about later. Sorry, can't make it. Got no choice. All this lot's just come in. OK, well, how about a late lunch? Can't do it. I'm already running late. I've got to see the DAC in 20 minutes. Can we take a rain check? Well, what's the point? You haven't got the time. I certainly haven't got the patience. Can we talk about this later? Forget it. What's to say? There's that new leather jacket, CDs. I mean, this stuff costs money, and she doesn't have any. She's a student, for crying out loud. Did you ask her where she got them from? Of course I did. She just tells me to mind my own business. She never used to be this cheeky, not until she started going out with this no-hoper. Mum, that was in my diaries for your own good. Is that your boyfriend? Kenny Foster. He's the one who's been leading her astray. It's not what it looks like from here. I'm sure Hayley's old enough to make her own mind up, aren't you? She's only 17. She's still a child. That's probably stolen, too. Is there a baby in the house? Not yet. For the benefit of the tape, I'm showing Hayley Walters exhibit CB2, a silver baby frame. Hayley, the two rings your mum brought in in that frame were stolen from the jewellers on Canley High Road a few days ago. Do you want to tell me how they came into your possession? Someone just asked me to look after them. Somebody, eh? We could do you for resealing stolen goods, do you know that? Well, I didn't know they were stolen. Your mum did. For the benefit of the tape, I'm now showing Hayley Walters a picture taken from the security cameras at the jewellers on Canley High Road. The description we have of the thief, it's Kenny Foster. Is that Kenny in the picture? Looks nothing like him. We'll see. Where does he live? I don't know his address. He says we're friends most of the time. You can get hold of him at Canley Technical College. He's a student there. Danny, listen, uh, about what I said earlier, I'm sorry it came out all wrong. I've just been a bit on edge at the moment. Yeah, well, you're not the only one, Sarge. If it gets out, I knew about this all along. Yeah, well, it's not gonna get out, okay? Not as long as we stick together. Look, do you have any idea how hard it's been for me to become sergeant? An Asian sergeant in the Met. I've had to put up with stick from my colleagues, the public, my friends, not to mention my own family. I mean, I've been this close to giving it up so many times. Look, you think you're on your own there? So what are you saying? What I'm saying is that what good's it going to do if you blow the whistle? The Met's going to lose two good cops and that scum Simpson's going to have won. Now, is that what you want? Of course not. Right, then. Forget it. It will blow over. Right, just take a seat while we sort out the paperwork. Then you'll be bailed. What's going to happen to me? You'll have to come back. And we may have to charge you with receiving oh, stolen goods. But I haven't done anything. Then why carry the can for someone who has then? Has she been threatened? Well, it's possible. The girl's got problems. She's pregnant, got a crazy boyfriend, and you know what they say about a mum being a girl's best friend? Yeah. Um, this isn't. Yeah, go ahead, Jim. This registered to a Mr. Joseph Alberti. 24 Raven Lane. Reported stolen earlier. Your receipt. Thanks, Jim. The money's still there. What do you want? A 99, please. All right. Want some strawberry sauce on that? Yes, please. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, don't worry about that. Bridge! Jim, any updates on these race crimes? Um, my latest was by a bunch of skinheads, sir. Great, that narrows it down to a couple of hundred people. What happened? 
Uh, Azim Khan, he's a young Asian guy. He's a good kid, well respected in the community. He tried to defend himself against him with a broken bottle. Is he all right? Physically, yes. It's his mental state that bothers me. I get the impression that him and a load of others are planning something at the march. Oh, like what? Well, retaliation. In fact, I think he might do something before then. Right, where is he now? He's down in custody. He appears in court tomorrow. Well, I'm sorry, sir, but... No, 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 no. It's just the timing of this. They've rerouted the march and it's the last thing I needed right now. Have you met with the community leaders? No, not yet. Tomorrow. Well, rather you than me, sir. They're going to be far from happy about this. Oh, tell me about it. Thanks, Jim. Tangle, 86, Alpha, Yankee. Yeah, right, Shush yeah. a minute, please. Look, we'll try and have an officer it with you as soon as we can. It was from the forecourt here, Black Salika. Look, try it's not mine. to touch anything until you yes. get there, OK? Um, bye. Oh, come on, for God's sake, my car's been nicked. Evening, Sam, uh, all units, Sierra, happen? Oscar, 28, Shipway Lane, robbery. Any units attend over? What about over? my car? Look, why'd you neck in, Des? We will deal with it. Sierra from 595, show me attending, Jim. Uh, all received. Look, write it down and get out. Everything all right? Does his car's been nicked, Sarge? All right. You mean this one? I had it bunged in the visitor space. Cass has got the keys in case it has to be moved. You what? I asked you to move it and you didn't. Next time it goes on the Channel Ferry. You. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Sir. Do me a favour, June. Sure. I need your advice. I bought an anniversary present for Sandra. I wondered if you'd model it for me. Well, it depends what it is. Oh, no, it's nothing like that. Oh. I just uh, wanted to see what it was like. Oh. Uh, when's your anniversary? Next week. She thought I'd forgotten, of course. I did last year. Didn't speak to me for days. <laughs> well, some men would be glad of that. Yes, well, we haven't always seen eye to eye. Mm. At the end of the day, we still love each other. Mm. I wish I knew what that felt like. I'm sure you will. Thank you. How does that look? Oh, it's beautiful. <clears throat> yes, Jim, what can I do for you? Um, well, actually, Sergeant, I've forgotten now. Hmm. We're wasting our time here. Right, Mike. Like, oh, excuse me. Do you know I can find Kenny Foster? Yeah. The guy with the ring in his nose. Thanks. Bit. Kenny Foster, PC Bradford, PC Tavener from Sun Hill. I need to ask you a few questions. What about? Where were you on Monday around three? <laughs> yeah, right. Where'd you get those then? The Commodore job. Can you just answer the question, please? Don't know. Wasn't it probably? You were at the jewellers on Canley Eye Road, were you? You tell me. Do you remember what you were wearing on Monday? Yeah, pink tutu and willies. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny Foster, I'm arresting you on suspicion of robbery. <laughs> Hold on, what's he supposed to have done? It's none of your my business. Something you later He's my mate, so I'm making it my business. Listen, Lich, you sit yourself down, or you find you going down the station with him. Hey, hang on a minute. 171 from 432. Reg, that suit that got nicked from the tailors on Canley High Road. Horrible purple thing, wasn't it? Well, it's all a matter of taste, but Tony Stamp seemed to think so, yeah. What was the name of the tailor? Uh, Serrano, Italian name. Description of suspect? Medium build, blue eyes, dark hair. Cheers, Reg. Right, you're nicked. What? Sierra 2, Who the hell are you, the fashion zero? police? No, Leave them alone. Transport I told you to sit three. down. Yeah, it's free country. Can't tell me what to do. Canada sit down. Shut up. No, you sit down. Right, make that three. That's it, Lich. You're nicked. I've touched you. What are you going to do me for, GBH? No, failing the attitude test. <laughs> you sad little man. Is this how you get your kicks? Yeah, I suppose it is. What have I done? You have been found in possession of an offensive suit. Well, come on.
What do you think you're doing? What do you expect parking it there? I didn't park it there. And anyway, I don't expect some stupid dollars to be diverted into my car. That's yours, then. It's a two-litre GT, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, no bit about cars, do you? Anyone's worth knowing about. Fancy one of those, do you? Nah, you wouldn't catch me driving one of those. Anyway, you know what they say about men who drive fast cars having small dicks. <laughs> I did it to get money for the baby. Yours and Haley's. Yeah. I'm on this course for three years. That's three years with no wages. You got any idea how much it costs to bring up a kid? Why didn't you get a part-time job? What, slogging my guts out for a minimum wage? Yeah, right. So you just had to steal the goods and get Haley to fence them for you, is that it? No, of course not. Haley's just a bit naive, that's all. I asked if I could keep the stuff at her place for a while. I was gonna sell it. And how much have you sold? None yet. All the stuff I nicked was there. Look, I've cooperated with you, haven't I? You got all the stuff back. So, what am I looking at for this? Eight years. You what? But this is my first offence. It doesn't matter. You held up a jeweler's with a baseball bat. That's robbery with a threat of violence. It carries a maximum of eight years in jail. But don't worry. If you behave yourself, you'll be out in time for your kid's fifth birthday. In you go. Cheers. What was all that about? Eight years. You know what'll happen. He'll be bailed to attend court tomorrow, then he'll get a suspended sentence. He threatened a jeweler with a baseball bat. He wasn't going to use it. You were out of order. The way I look at it is, if I can scare at least one of them into changing the ways, then I'm doing my job. Well, you might have scared him into doing something stupid. Like what? Topping himself? Don't be soft. And even if I did, at least it'd be one less to worry about. Look, it was just a joke, that's all. You know people say, are you wearing that for a bet? Well, I was. And part of the bet was that I had to nick it. So you think theft is a joke, do you? If someone came around your house and stole all your stuff, you'd be laughing your head off. No, of course not. Look, it's rag week, and people do some crazy things. I know it was a stupid thing to do, and I'm sorry. I'll take it back and apologise. I'll even have it cleaned. What more can I do? You can tell us about Kenny Foster. We found some stolen goods at the house of his girlfriend. You know anything about that? No, no, of course not. And neither does Haley. You know her well, do you? Well enough. Kenny's just using her, taking advantage of her good nature. You mean he's a bad influence on her? Yeah, that's what I mean. I tell you, she could do a hell of a lot better than him. Like you, you mean? Yeah, why not? Beaumont. Oh, that's an unusual name. Your friend, Simon. Is he related to Charles Beaumont, the MP? The disgraced politician, yeah. He's his dad. We lives in Spain with his new bird now. Son of an MP, going to Canley Tech. Must be a hell of a step down from what he's used to. No, it is. Why do you think he's got such a chip on his shoulder? Look, are you going to keep me hanging around all night? Are you going to tell me what the charge is? Whatever I want it to be. Assaulting a police officer, threatening and abusive behaviour. I'm sure I can think up a few more. Do you want me to go on? All right. I get the message. It's more like it. This is a taped interview with Simon Beaumont, officer's president of PC Bradford and... PC Taverner. We want to ask you a few questions about stolen property found in the possession of one Haley Walters. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Simon, we found these rings along with other stolen items in Kenny's girlfriend's house. What's that got to do with me? That's what we'd like to know. We think you and your friends have been stealing jewellery, leather jacket CDs, and getting Haley to sell them on for you. Oh, please, give me a break. Why would I want to waste my time making stupid CDs and stuff? For the money. And how much would that be once you divided it by four? 30 quid each? Do you have any idea how much money I stand to inherit next year? Do you? Take your annual salaries, add them together, and multiply them by 10. And you're still nowhere close. 
Up, Daz, your car keys are here when it's convenient. Thank you very much. Where's Kenny? Don't worry, you'll be able to compare notes later. Funny, isn't it? When you bring the lippy ones in, they always shut up. I don't remember telling you anything that'll help you solve the case, Columbo. You what? Des. Well, I've had enough lip off him. If he was in Turkey or somewhere like that, he wouldn't get away with it. He'd beat the soles of his feet with a stick. Maybe you should ask for a transfer, then. Cat. Go on, do one. <laughs> I thought we'd go to charm school. Ever thought of doing stand-up? What is it with you? Why do you always have to have the last word? Maybe I'm sick of taking crap off people, beards included. Do you think anyone falls for that tough guy macho act? Who says it's an act? Your mouth and no trousers. It's only one way to find out. She loves me. Jim. Jim, take a look at this. That's Desi's car. Do you want to tell him or shall I? Oh, can I? Please. Where's my keys? You were there a minute ago. Where's my keys? You were there a minute ago. You stupid cow, you're supposed to be looking after them. Um, I'm trying to do my job here and I'll play car park attendant for you, you know. Part of furniture, mate. <laughs> See, you've got the right idea then. Staying in here, safer than being out there. It's a powder keg, isn't it? You're talking about this march being rerouted and the Asians knowing about it. Rerouted? I didn't know nothing about that. Ah, well, you see, I've got my ear to the ground. I hear things. I'm always a bloody loss to know about everything around here. So it could be worse. Could be the boss. Chandler, what about him? Well, he's the one who's going to have to keep them happy, isn't he? Don't envy him his job. Dear, you couldn't predict that, could you? I can't predict any of it. I just know that whatever it's going to be, it's going to be bad. Well, that's worse than bad. That's not it. Oh, get a grip of your tights, will you, Reggie, babe? What are you looking so happy about? I've just heard that Chandler is going to get grilled by the Asians over this march. <laughs> you are a sick man, Mickey. Yeah, I've got to get my kick somehow, haven't I? Oh, what I wouldn't give to be a fly on the wall when that happens. And I thought all good-looking birds were supposed to be thick. Just goes to show you, right? <laughs> I think he meant that as a compliment, Sarge. How's things? Not too bad, Sarge. Any further racial incidents? No. Right, well, look, if there are, I'd like to know about them first-hand, OK? Sarge. Everything all right, Jim? Sarge? There's nothing wrong, is there? Good Not with me. The police station. Yes, it is. Is this okay. about the necklace? It's nothing to do with me, Sarge. I really don't want to know. Oh, come on, Jim. Right. Get a grip. Where was it parked? I've known Derek Conway almost as long as I've known you. <laughs> so? Would you honestly think that he and I'd be starting an affair? And do you know what time's happened? Do you? Okay. You better get that. Sonal Police Station, can I help you? It's too late. He's cleared off. Which way? Down the hill. On a skateboard. What did he look like? He's a short guy. Wearing a hoodie top. He's got a green rucksack on his back, which has got all my bloody takings in it. What kind of gun? A shotgun? No, a handgun. Big thing. There he is. All units from Sierra Oscar 5. Suspect now towards Molina Road.
Yep, that's Kenny Foster. There's no mistaking his taste in jewellery. Well, he knows what he's doing. He waited till the Union Cup race meeting was on, and then he hits a place and he gets away with 30 grand. That ice cream van robbery, that was a Magnum too, wasn't it? Yeah, different description, though. Tall guy, about six foot. Kenny Foster's only about 5'3". Hang on. What's up? Simon Beaumont. Who's he? The guy driving Des's car. Kenny's friend. Oh, come on. What are the chances of there being two Magnums? They must be part of a gang. You said Foster's already up for theft. Now this. Is he mad or something? Well, you've heard of the saying you might as well be hung for a sheep as a lamb. I reckon he only did it because he thought he was getting eight years for jewellery theft. And where did he get that idea from? Don't ask. Sierra Roscoe from 570. Go ahead. Got an address for Kenny Foster. It's 33 Naylor Close. And we believe the suspect to be armed. All received. I'll alert SO19. Your boss, Chandler, said in the press that his door is always open where racial matters are concerned. I want to speak to him. Sir, uh, have you spoken to the Asian community leaders yet? No, I'll be leaving shortly. Why? Well, I just wondered if you need any help, a bit of support line, I'd come with you. In case things get nasty. Thanks, Mickey. I'll uh, give you a shout when I'm leaving. I'm not forgiven. Come on. You knew it was never going to be easy. We've both got jobs to do here, and it makes it ten times worse that we're always looking over our shoulders. You should learn to relax more, sir. You look a bit tense. Yeah, well, you know I can only relax when I'm with you. <laughs> I don't know how I put up with it. Anybody else will tell you where to go? I know. Make it up to you, promise. Damn right you will. I'm going to make you grovel. Oh, fantastic. I can't wait. Four o'clock. Right, well, I'll leave that with you. Sir. Derek. Sorry to bother you. Bit of a problem and I may need your help. Sir? I've just heard about some urgent business down at the council and it's going to take the best part of the afternoon to sort out. Yes, I know, but I haven't had a chance to speak to the community leaders yet. I think you could have a word. Well, I... <sighs> it needs diplomacy and a cool head. Think you can calm them down? I'll give it my best shot, sir. And put my faith in you. Then I won't let you down. Cheers, mate. Thanks. Cheers. Sarge? Yep. Olga, elusive commandeer of Frost Precursor. <laughs> Jerem and Roy appropriate a thunderous ensemble. <laughs> what is this? It's a game. Beaumont taught them into it. You know, nicking things to make Rag Week a bit more exciting. It started off as a laugh at first, but now it's getting out of hand. I'd say it was already out of hand when Kenny held up the jewellers. The wedding rings weren't part of the game. He stole them so we could get married. And you're a bit young. Well, he says he wants to do the right thing by me. So what happened to the money from the betting office robberies? I don't know. He said it wasn't safe for me to have 30,000 at home with Mum snooping about. But I really appreciate you coming forward with all this, but why have you decided to tell us all this now? He's not taking this baby seriously. He says he is. The rings and presents don't make everything all right, do they? I told him I'd want my kid to grow up with an armed robber for a dad. He just laughed. The only way he's going to stop is if you catch him. Yeah, well, we're trying, Hayley, but if we do... It's going to be difficult to take a lenient view. Is he making things worse? You know what it's like when you reach the next level of a game? You want to see how far you can get. Well, this is level two now. The stakes are higher. So are the rewards. 
What's he going to do next? He was talking about opening up a club in Ibiza with the money they make holding up building societies. Building societies are really difficult to get cash from, even with a gun. And Kenny and his mates are amateurs. Someone's going to get hurt here. I don't think that'll put them off. They're too busy egging each other on, aren't they? I warned him how serious this was, but he just said, it's game on. There's no going back. You, uh, see Mr Chandler? Yeah, he was on his way to the yard. No. I'm supposed to be going with him to the Asian Community Centre. Well, you better hurry up then before you miss all the fun. I want a full report! Something wrong? Well, I was supposed to be going to the community centre with Chandler, but he seems to have uh, taken off without me. I'm going that way. No, no, you aren't, mate. Police business, you know. Oh, police business. Well, I wouldn't know anything about that, would I? Hey, listen, no hard feelings, eh? <laughs> Kenny Foster's the main suspect, who was armed. Paul Lomax, Simon Bowman are his accomplices. Now, we believe they've all been sharing the same magnum. OK, they were brought in yesterday. Foster was given bail for a court appearance and Lomax was released pending further inquiries. Now, since then, they've disappeared, along with Simon Bowman, the ringleader. In Des Tavener's car, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> These players' names are all anagrams of famous DJs. Olga Elusive is Lil Louis Vega. Sneaky Glenn Oz is Kenny Gonzalez, and Jam Am Roy, that's Norman Jay. Well, it, it makes a lot of sense about them wanting to open a club, doesn't it? Well, that's good work. Yeah, Helly Walters reckons that the next target's going to be a building society, although she doesn't know which one. You know, it might help if we all start to think along the same lines as Nick for these clues. Out of the ordinary, this, isn't it, Gav? Yes, but if we all put our minds to it, there's no reason why we shouldn't get a result. Okay, now according to my dictionary, Congress means union. So we're going to set up an oboe on the Union Building Society. And we'll reconvene here at 1700 hours. What do you reckon then, Reg? You're a bit of a lateral thinker. What is wrong with you? You've been like a cat on a hot tin roof all day. It's this funny feeling that I've got. It's been getting worse as the day's gone on. I stand it. It's like a broken record. So I've seen you taking the uh, crosswords to the toilets. You fancy giving this a go? No, not really. A bit might help you take your mind off things. Yeah, go on then. Kate? Hang on. What? I think I know who Chandler's seen. Do you? Hmm. I made a few phone calls to part rise his old neck. A little birdie there tells me he's seen a woman going into a hotel with Chandler. Well, that's not much to go. Apparently medium build. Yeah, medium build, brown hair, about your height. Really? Um, hmm. You don't think it could be Cass, do you? Cass Rittman. <laughs> <laughs> no. Look, I understand your frustration, but once I've spoken to Mr. Shah, I'm sure we can sort this whole thing out, OK? That's not what I'm asking. I want to know if you're going to cancel this march or not. What's going on here? We could ask you the same thing. Is this march going ahead? Well, I can't comment on that. Well, I'll take that as a yes, then. Huh. Waste of time. There's nothing you can do here. So why don't you just let the Chief Inspector handle it through the proper channels, eh? And see you both not here when I get out. Where's Mr Chandler, sir? Oh, uh, important business at the council. He asked me to handle this. Yeah, I wonder why. What are you doing here, anyway? I said I'd give him a hand, that's all. In case things got nasty. Thanks, Mickey. It's a good chance they might. This isn't over yet. Easy, ensemble, suit. Right, and thunderous is loud. 
Jam and Roy to appropriate a thunderous ensemble. No, that's right. And Norman Jay is to pinch a loud suit. Olga, elusive, to commandeer a frost precursor. Oh, well, commandeer is hijack and frost precursor is obviously an ice cream bag. You're cooking with gas here, Reg. Mm, yeah. I'll tell you what, though, that bit about the Congress in the Union, I I'm not sure... I don't think it means the Union Building Society. Uh, what, then? Well, they are the sponsors of the Union Cup race meeting. So that makes it the betting shop job from the other day. You know, you're wasted here, Rich. Mm. So have you ever considered Mensa? Mensa? No. Petty, babe. Come on, let's get going, will ya? Mrs Walters, I hope you're happy with yourself. Sorry, I don't understand. Read that. It's from Hayley. She's only gone and left the country with that boyfriend of hers. Married in a romantic beach ceremony. No one invited. Oh, and don't worry about the baby, cos there isn't one. Signed the future Mrs Lomax. Who's he? Poor Lomax. I thought she was going out with Kenny Foster. Well, so did Kenny, obviously. And he thought she was carrying his child. This is your fault. Me? I brought her here so that you could have a word with her. Fat lot of good that did. Well, we're not social workers, Mrs Walters. Do you know when she started at that technical college? I had high hopes for her. She had a whole future ahead of her. Well, she still has. Well, that a future? I thought she was smarter than that. <sighs> She's smarter than you think. Both are. 432 for 570. Go ahead. Dad, you're only looking for two suspects. I've just heard that Paul Lomax is alone with Haley. Which proves my theory. You can never trust a woman. Ha uh ha. -huh. Yeah, always see. You do have to admire them, don't you, know, Des? Very clever coming up with something like this. Admire them? You haven't met them. A pair of blades. Typical of a student to come up with something like this. Intellectual crap. Where everything's upside down and back to front, and you need a degree to work it out. Well, you might have something there. What they're all students that'll waste of space. No, no, about the clue. I've been back to front. Yeah, you know, look, you see, delay, that could be hold up. And pleasure, well, that could be enjoyment. Which might mean... That you're barking up the wrong tree. No, 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 look, hang on, look, it's all in ears. Look, enjoyment, amusement. Well, what's pergola, then? A Spanish bed? <laughs> no, pergola, it's like a doorway, an archway, cloisters. Cloisters sounds nasty. <laughs> a cloister, is it? Well, it's like an arcade. Dear. I think I might have cracked this. I reckon they're going to do the Golden Falls. Oh, don't be soft. You know what it might mean, don't you, if they are? Your car's going to be there. It's worth a try. Reg, you're a genius. Sarah Oscar from 171. Go ahead, Reg. Yeah, the Golden Falls Amusement Arcade. Uh, Bleed to robbery in progress. I request a Trojan <laughs> unit. I know what you're thinking. Is it real or is it fake? Well, I gotta tell you, in all this excitement, I kinda lost track myself. But if it is real, then this 44 Magnum is the most powerful handgun in the world and will blow your head clean off. So you gotta ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Bang! I've got a quote for you. Women are more dangerous than guns. Son of Godfather. Fake. Come on, Reg. Good night, sir. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Certainly went a few rounds there, didn't you? Yeah, they took a bit of persuading, didn't they, Mickey? No, I think I managed to soothe their troubled brows, so to speak. Not your job, though, was it, sir? No. Oh, never mind. 
I better give Mr Chandler his progress report. Thanks a lot, Mickey. Good night. Good night, sir. Excuse me. Would you spit at me, please? Yeah, sure. Who's that? Who cares? Oh, Exhaust. You're never gonna get through there. Oh my god! Bit quiet this evening, eh, Sarge? You see? Nothing to worry about. Sarah, what's going on, DC Wave? Urgent assistance required. Sierra 1 MP, officer requires urgent assistance at Grim Road. Yeah, that's not far from me. Do you think we should take that? No, I don't, Reggie, babe. I've got other things on my mind. Next on the bill. Does it ever get to you? For the fact that it just never stops coming. You can't start thinking like that. What's your problem? We let Mr. Conway down. You gotta decide where you're gonna stand. With the living or with the dead.